aid for sleep? Are you using it for PTSD? Are you using it to uh, help with anxiety so you can get out of bed in the morning? And then what cannabinoid profile would be best for that? What terpene profile would be best for that? And do you want to go with something maybe uh, thinking of harm reduction? Do you want to go with edibles, topicals, tincture? Or do you need a fast acting medicine? Would a uh, heavy concentrate be better for you? Or would a uh, flower be better for you? So just finding out what medicine is there and what medicine is best for the veteran. And we do need um, the VA to come on board and start prescribing cannabis because veterans are being overprescribed. As we know, we're losing 22 veterans a day to being overprescribed or either overdosing or suicide. And that's in states that are reporting. Texas and California, we don't have the numbers, so we honestly don't know how many veterans we're losing a day. Uh, I think the release of uh, you know full access to use of cannabis and in all of its forms should just be open for everybody to use. So you can grow it, use it as a garden in your backyard for yourself, it, not, not to be regulated or you know sanctioned for your personal use. You know, nobody is sanctioning your your garden the back of your house if you want to have you know uh, tomatoes, cucumbers. So just if they want to have medicine and have medicinal, have a system set, set up for that poor veterans and everybody else. Nobody should be left out of you know the medicinal properties nor the industrial property of hemp. I mean, it's, it's just it's for everyone. It shouldn't be harbored, uh, you know, hindered by anybody or anything. And anybody that does and it does flip over to become a you know a very profitable uh, business shouldn't be allowed to be a, a part of it. So assess where you're at. Basically, is what I got from Ellen, and pick what's best for you. And what I got from Chris is. Fuck that, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just free for everyone. Like, it's an open market. If its medicinal properties are good, use it. If you can use it for construction, use it. If it's available, you can have it. Like, so it's the there. open market is available just like radishes or cabbage or anything like anything else like that. But for like for veterans in particular, if you were if you were a veteran, say coming home from whatever ridiculous war is going on now, I don't even pay attention. I mean, say you're just coming home, and before you even talk to the VA and get assessed and get a rating and all that other bullshit, the very first thing you, did, you should do, I think, like, somebody that's been spun out from orange shit, they should at least have the option to be like, yo, you can, you can use this cannabis instead of going to the VA and eating all these pills, but yo, like, here's how you go to the VA and make it so they pay you to be alive, like most of us. I'm, I'm sorry, that wasn't like a question, I was just kind of talking. <laughs> sorry about that. Devin, oh. same question. So, so you're, to add on to what you were just saying, the veterans should be hooked up immediately with their VSO. Uh, coming from Massachusetts, uh, being familiar with the Veterans Advocacy Services here in Massachusetts, uh, with a returning veteran immediately coming right back, fresh from uh, whatever combat zone he just came from, I strongly recommend that he uh, uh, links up with his VSO, which is a veteran service officer, which every city in uh, Massachusetts has in their town hall. These people are trained by the state to know every nook and cranny where the state, the government, is hiding money for veterans. Every veteran in Massachusetts has a right to $1,000 when they get home for their first deployment, and a, and a $500 stipend after that for every time they come home. A lot of people don't know that. So as soon as they get home, I advise them to super get with, uh, link up with their VSO. Uh, another agency, I, I strongly recommend, uh, the, the Disabled American Veterans, those guys are are, are above and beyond capable of help, help linking up any veteran that's recently returned and is looking to get squared away with their their uh, with getting their uh, uh, their evaluations, their assessments, or even just getting a diagnosis uh, sheet to even start the process to talk to a cannabis doctor to even get a print cannabis prescription. Uh, after that, like Steve Mandeli was saying. I strongly advise that veteran to now take a long, uh, long look at what they're taking so they're not mixing any medications that have strong, uh, strong negative issues. And then look, as Ellen's saying, look at uh, what you're trying to treat and, and what's going to affect the endocannabinoid system in your body to better treat that. So starting with cities and towns, the BSOs and stuff, non-VA related places. I think that's great advice. Well, well, any any of this, any of the uh, the veteran services outlets out there, but on, uh, it starts small and go big from there. Yeah, absolutely, dude. DAV got me my claim in three months. I was home, home homeless three months. They got it. Mitch, same question. Veterans straight out of Podunk, Egypt. You know, three months back, like. 
what do you do? All right, well, basically it seems like everybody's coveted. We need to educate ourselves. I mean, we need to get in there and do the, do the leg work. We gotta find the groups that are out there that are willing to help people. Not very good at this mic thing. Um, so basically, education on all of this is the biggest part. People come home, they they don't know. People smoking weed is gonna make them spun out, clean out, and all. It, you gotta find out what's actually gonna work for you. Just like everybody says, you can only reiterate the same thing so many times. Find out what works for you. It's pretty much, you're gonna work for you, so find what works best. You don't wanna spend all your money all day long on something that's not gonna work, so find the groups that are already done the work. Get them to help you do the work. Um, pretty much all I got. Yeah, what, what he was saying. Five minutes of research will save you $10 on fucking cash. So take the time to do the research and save yourself the money in the hassle. Because if you're like me, or like any other veterans on the family, you're on a fixed income. And any veteran returning is going to be on a very fixed income for an unseeable amount of time. So it's better to do the research and waste the time instead of wasting money. Now I got I got another pretty specific question. To, well, not really specific, but something that people like us would definitely experience. Guys that were in our unit, guys that we knew from the military that are very very far gone. I ran into this stuff with myself, well, with my friend in, in NorCal, just like going off the deep end. What did, what to do about somebody like that? Uh, a lot of this, uh, we do still have some personal responsibilities. There are a lot of people like. There's never 100% of anything. You're never going to be able to get to 100% of the guys. You're never going to fix a problem 100%. Best thing is to, to find out that they're at least taking care of themselves. Find out if they are enrolled or seeking health care. But there, there are many times where you're running the people. If someone had come to me at an earlier point, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done anything. I was already all set. I didn't want to be talked to. I didn't want to be approached by anybody. I was already talking to doctors. I already heard it all. So the best thing is to just check in every once in a while, but don't ever try to push too hard. Uh, you could, you, you don't know how bad of a day that person's having. So at least just keep checking in. That's all you can do. Um, so I've had this happen with some of your friends, and like uh, Steve was saying, you just have to be gentle, and then I give them information, um, and then some friends will actually recognize that there's a problem. Like I have a friend who's been on prescribed sleeping medication and anti-anxiety medication for almost a decade and his liver is hurting and he's killing his body and he's like Ellen what do I do so we started on some CBDs and now with it being uh, recreational and having adult use it actually opens up that conversation more so because I found that a lot of veterans you know we live on the straight and narrow and even though we know that it's propaganda and stigma they still you know, right is right, wrong is wrong, and cannabis is wrong, I'm staying away from it, I'm going for pharmaceuticals, because that's what my doctor gives me. So it's on you to be like, actually, you know, the government owns the patent, 6630507, since 2003, and oh, did you know about your endocannabinoid system? And just, you know, I give him treats, and I tell him, you know, dose, and I make sure that his wife knows before he takes anything, so that way, um, if he does have, like, a panic attack, or PTSD comes about, that she knows just to be mindful of it, so just, making sure that you're there as a support system and letting them know that they're loved and they're not alone. I think the system has to start when you're enlisted, before you actually get out of the military. Because when you're in, you have so much structure and you have so many people to turn to to say like, and ask questions, and you'll get an answer. And if not, you'll find somebody else and they'll have an answer. When you get out, you don't have a support system. You have nobody to fall onto. So if you have a structure, set up previous and when you get out that you're still attached to that still helps you to have structure helps you to you know reformat what is it you're doing that will allow you to get into the civilian market of cannabis and you know what have you without actually having to dive right into the pharmaceutical pills you know give us options but also give us the break when we get out that we need not not from you know the the stresses because you know that's part of what we do but, you know, a break from having to rely on maybe being homeless for six months that we have no idea what we're doing. We've lost all the direction that we had and now we're back at square one. Uh, the question was, uh, how do uh, how, 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 how would I... Spun out Battle Buddy. Right on, Battle Buddy, brother. I believe the question was, uh, 
Why would I uh, take on a, a, a bad buddy in crisis? Like yeah, that? yeah, exactly that. I'm a little stoned too. I think I kind of segue it out from my own mind. If a bad buddy was in crisis, situation kind of dictate. Depends on the battle buddy. Depends on our experiences, and our our relationships together. I'm gonna take my uh, my individual relationship with my buddy, and I'm gonna take care of the best I can. I'm gonna hook him up with little services he can if he's going through a, a housing crisis. I work with uh, uh, I'll reach out to the uh, the local shelters in the room to get a medium uh, roof over his head. If there's a place to stay at my house, a place to stay at someone else's, we will reach out to the community. If he's having financial or family problems, we will get that addressed. If it's just someone to talk to, always an ear. Uh, the situation's got to dictate. I wish I could just give you a cookie cutter answer, but every every person had a different situation when they were overseas. Everybody's gonna, like every veteran has different days, and how it's gonna bring them, like how what brought them up up the ladder and what's gonna bring them down the ladder is gonna be up to that that relationship you have with your with your battle buddy and the and, and the traumas you have both faced. Uh, uh, I wish I could give a better uh, uh, cookie cutter situation uh, uh, than that. Other than housing, I'd reach out to uh, my friends at the, uh, the DAV or any other veterans advocacy services that handle such things. Um, food uh, or any other, you know, uh, food or family, same. But when it comes to just having a friend, I got plenty of gas to tank, got plenty of minutes on the phone. I think that's a great answer, dude. You made the same question. I think being on the end sucks. You guys take all the good answers. You may, you may hang in. Uh, um, no, like everybody said, it's situal, it's situation based. Um, I mean, personally, right now I'm going through with a buddy that I was on deployment with. He's the alcohol side, I'm the weed side. I'm the devil because all I do is smoke weed. He's a drunk, blither, and mess, can't fucking drive straight. Uh, so. It's, we get in the same argument all the time. I take his fucking keys, throw him into the woods, because he's trying to fucking fool, and then he won't get in the car and drive home with me, because I've been smoking weed all night, so I'm extremely impaired. Just as fucking fucked up as him. Sorry, I got shit mouth. Um, but it, it's, you really, like you said, there is no cookie cutter answer. It's everybody's different. I mean, my buddy's a wicked hothead. I mean, he, me and him are literally the exact same person. We smash skulls with the same weapon. So it's just like, we go back and forth, we get no no progress. My wife talks to him for two seconds and he's like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good. It's, it's, it's literally, use your team, use the people around you. Um, it's not gonna be just you. It could be something your kids could say to them. It could be something that some random adult could check them and be like, listen, you're being a fool. I mean, people sometimes need to hear it. That's at least how I feel about it. All right, this next one's about personal experiences. You guys have been all over the place, done all sorts of wide, like a wide variety of different crazy things in the industry, for the movement, for vets in general. I uh, just like, I want to hear a personal experience that each of you have. Tell me a story. Mitch, you want to start at the end this time so you can have the uh, for fresh answers? I get, a, I get a fresh answer. All right, if, uh, if we're using uh, fresh experiences, I, I'm, I'm going to use Ashley because I always, this little girl is like literally the sunshine. Uh, she's at a lot of these things all the time. Her mother's a big advocate for this. She's 12 year old, has your base. The girl has more seizures than you can imagine. I mean, her day is miserable. You can literally see them coming on when you see the benzo weed. When you see that itch, that collar pick that everybody knows that's been on the pedals coming off of them, and that scratch that you got. She's a 12 year old little girl, and you can see that she doesn't know what's happening. Her mother doesn't know she's happening because she's never been on the pills. Any of us have been around, you see it in the first three seconds of her getting that, that Jones, that Jones. That little girl can dab CBD, literally vaporize CBD, and instantly go from a puddle mess sitting there curled up screaming and crying to jumping up and running around in circles. Like, I, I do a lot of everything. I don't care if the kid's a kid. If their parents are good with them, the father's a cop. I mean, so basically, I don't know. I'll gladly stand there all day long in front of a judge with my freaking chest full of medals and say, absolutely, that's exactly what I do. Um, to me, we need to be reaching out, helping the ones that we have the availability to help. Um, and I, like I said, I, I stick to this little girl a lot because she's sunshine. Like, she's the smiliest smiley gets. And 90% of the time, she's not, unless it's beauty cannabis. It's literally the only thing that actually helps her out. That's beautiful, dude. Uh, uh, where I started, I got uh, admitted to be discharged from the Army in 2010 after uh, 
Uh, I was med boarded. Uh, my vehicle uh, was struck by several uh, roadside bombs in 2007 uh, when I was in uh, Iraq with the Army. Uh, I broke my back, broke my shoulder, tore uh, a bunch of ligaments in my knee, and of course, the traumatic brain, uh, traumatic brain injury. Got to stutter a little bit. Uh, from there, uh, got out of the Army. I was very angry because I did not want to leave. It was kind of forced upon me. So, took my anger out on everything that was in front of me. Really bad. Fans get me locked up for a while because I was really angry and very capable. And I did some things that you shouldn't do. Um, did my time, got out, we managed to get myself into a PTSD clinic. Really turned me around. It was six, uh, six months intensive, uh, intensive, uh, uh, intensive therapy. Got out there. As soon as I got out, I wanted to fucking get the next guy. I'm like, I, I wanted to get that guy. That turned me into a complete one angry. The guy, the angry guy, that the angry, I, I, I can't even do I was, my anger was undescribable. My fury, my violence, it's just a person, part of me, I'm glad I'm not anymore. And I, I wanted to help the next person evolve past that and become a person that can still be happy, deserves to feel happy. And move forward with their life after their after their. So, my journey started after my treatment. To start helping other veterans move forward. At, like move forward with like with their trauma. I went to school for uh, like psychology. Due to my arrest record, I did not get a job in that field. Got to do a background check. Blah blah blah. Thank you. Um, so, I help out the best I can. I listen. I talk. I, I go out uh, due to my uh, my experiences. My, my, I, I, I I got enough to do I help when I can without doing harm to myself or my family, and just try to make sure another veteran, at least one or two other guys, or as many as I can, don't end up letting that anger get them locked up again, or get locked up at all. I can go forward with that. I do. Say better than that. Uh, yeah, you're, you're saying it just fine, bro. I'm an Iraqi veteran. Uh, I was the army almost 10 years. And um, when I became uh, exposed to the fact that veterans don't have rights of our own and we're not protected by the United States Constitution under any form, I took it upon myself to get a together 22 body bags that I made up and I had them in the back of my pickup truck and I drove them from Philadelphia all the way here to you know emphasize the fact that 22 veterans commit suicide every day on pharmaceuticals and nobody bats an eye. Everybody just kind of looks the other way and you don't actually have an ability to look at something and say like that's really what it is now. The truckload of bodies and it's not just some numbers on the board. It's not some, 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 some some statistics, you know, and uh, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, but the, I still uh, help out our homeless people and homeless veterans on the streets of Philadelphia in the evenings, weekends, whenever I can. So I guess uh, my personal story would be uh, when I got out of the course, I started working in the medical marijuana uh, market in California. It, and in 12, I came back home to, and during that time, um, my mom became very sick, and I ended up um, taking care of her, and um, I dropped out of school, and that was that was my full-time thing for more than a year before I re-emerged into the New England cannabis industry. I didn't know anybody, and I felt very alone, and it, it was the hardest time of my life because it was like I knew if I was in California. I could just walk into the store and get my mom THC, CBD, CBN, like anything she needs. Like that's my mom, she says she doesn't feel good. And I give her cannabis, she says she feels better. Like I'll fight you if you tell me any different, my mom's not a liar. So that's what I'm here to do is take care of my mom. And it was, uh, she passed away in 2015 in New Hampshire. They didn't have a, a functioning medical marijuana program. So as far as breaking the law goes, sometimes the government really puts you in a place where my mom says it makes it feel better if she can't have it in her state. I have what little I have in my state. I'm going to bring it to her, and I'll be damned any other way. So 
with that in mind, like just making sure that when she passed and I saw what it did for her, uh, really advocating for that palliative care and making sure that you have it at end of life. And if that's what you want to use aside from it's an opiate, so that way maybe you're more cognitive during the final time, then so be it. So I teach a lot of cannabis education that really helped inspire me that every single person I can teach can go out to a new state, to a family member, to a friend and teach them. So I get phone calls and pictures and texts all the time. I'll be like, oh, I took your edibles class, or I took your topicals class, and like, we're having a party, and they're having a great time, or I need these gummy bears. And then I'll get text messages where it's somebody in a hospital bed, or somebody just passed away and was like, hey, I made gummy bears, or I made those hard candies, and they really, really helped during that final stage, and it really helped relieve pain. So thank you so much for teaching me that, and I feel like, I think that's part of my mission and that's what helps keep me going is just teaching that education because you never know who's going to be able to use it and even years later when they can use it in life and who they can help uh and it's you know it's important for the veteran community it's just important for like the human community every single one of us has an endocannabinoid system or a person that could use this plan or this information so being a good steward and getting it out there all right, so for me, um, I just say back in December, when I finally had the VA come after me, uh, take half of my benefits away from me, saying that I was too active. So I decided to try to one-up. I uh, stood out in front of City Hall in Boston for the week before Christmas, collected a couple hundred uh, toys for the, there's a center in um, Worcester for female veterans that are homeless with children and we provided those kids with their Christmas presents for Christmas. Um, then this past April, after I got the VA to say that they were basically assholes and they were wrong, it took two letters of uh, congressional inquiry to get that changed. So I took a uh, few thousand dollars from the retro check that we're all familiar with from the VA and uh, bought breakfast for the 250 veterans that live at the Moonland Center and Home for Veterans uh, right next to City Hall. And myself, my wife, and uh, City Councilor Tito Jackson served a hot breakfast to the 200 veterans that were telling us they haven't had a hot breakfast in eight, nine months. They can't remember the last time they had a, like a hot breakfast, and I think that's disgusting. Um, the work I do helping um, other veterans um, the most gratifying work is when it's not cannabis related. It's more related to being able to be functional again because of cannabis and just being able to help everybody, not just veterans that want to be involved with cannabis. Um, that's a, that's a, small, a small percentage of us. Um, I feel like the industry gets too caught up in cannabis, 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 and if you replace that with opioids, how would you, how would you sound? How would you think other people sound if that's all they talked about? So I think it's getting past that and getting into helping everybody, no matter what it is, helping homeless veterans, helping children, helping minorities, just standing up for what's right. Um, just because we are hurt, uh, just because the VA labels us whatever, we get all these different labels, uh, we're still serving. We still care about this country uh, more than most. We are, in Massachusetts, we're only 5% of the population. There's only 330,000 veterans in Massachusetts just over 89,000 disabled veterans. So we are we are also a minority group and we need to stand together and make some changes. So no more no more veterans are being taken advantage of in, in any aspect. Myself, um, I'm gonna be putting my money where my mouth is next year. I'm gonna be having three dispensaries open in Massachusetts and we're gonna have programs to help out those 100% disabled veterans. The more customers that we come in, the more we can get it close to zero for, for veterans and, and what they can get their medicine for. So I'm looking forward to being able to do that and helping out even more as uh, I have more um, funding and tools available to do that.
know, they've spent all their money on treatments that didn't work, and then mortgaged their house to try to get more treatments that didn't work. And I made a picture out of Everclear and my bubble hat that I was making and selling to dispensers at the time. Uh, I sent it back to her and stopped him, you know, almost immediately. And I started getting text messages. Oh, she hasn't had a seizure in three days. She hasn't had a seizure in three days. You know, hasn't had a seizure in a week. Oh, shit, she had a seizure. So then we got her on the RSO. Now, like, you know, two, three years later, she's driving a car around. This girl was 19 in a wheelchair. Driving a car around. Going to high school in New Hampshire. Doing all that kind of, like, that kid shit that a lot of us missed out on. I mean, that has nothing to do with veterans, but that's just, like, like my end of the industry. It's just, like, you fucking help people no matter what it doesn't really matter it's just like if it's a vet great you know free meds here you go that guy right back there justin moreau kicked down all sorts of shit to vets for nothing ask the fucking nothing for it watch him do it you know there's so many of us out there and like not all of us went the way of law enforcement you know and it, it's just amazing to me what like the facets of, of all this that we find ourselves in these days. and you know not everybody's gonna always get along and you know, who gives a shit we don't get along? We're all in this world. We're all have had different experiences in different parts of the country. You know, so like, really it said the enemies are the administration. And like, making consistent.